Hi there and welcome along to the 10th row of the 12 rows of Christmas. Today on the 10th row of Christmas, my true love gave to me 10 power fives. What we're gonna do is a 30 minute row and every three minutes, we're gonna take five power strokes. Now, most of that half hour row, you're gonna be doing at 18 strokes a minute and 2K plus 20 pace. But for those five power strokes that happen every three minutes, I want you to hold the same 18 strokes a minute, but this time really launch in with the power from your legs, okay? Now, depending on what your legs are feeling like after yesterday's workout, out, which was all about power at 20 strokes a minute your muscles might be feeling a little bit uh used in which case just go like two three seconds faster for these power strokes just put some kind of effort in but if you're feeling really fresh or you haven't just done a really powerful workout the day before then you can really go for it on these and maybe see if you can add like seven eight seconds for these five power strokes okay so it's a simple row um and really these power strokes are just in there to try and make things a little bit more interesting than just throwing an 18 strokes per minute half hour row at you okay <laughs> so Let's get into a warm up. We're going to just go back to our four minute warm up for today's row and head to the str straight to the front of the machine and set your drag factor. If you don't know about drag factor for the concept of rowing machine, then please do check out the video that I have on this channel. I set mine to run about 125 in case that helps. If you're not on the concept two, then please just set the resistance so you get a reasonable weight from the stroke, but you don't have to heave your back against it, okay? Next up, if you're able to, please set your monitor at eye height so you don't have to look up, but you're also not looking down. And finally, if you can adjust the height of your foot plates, then set it to a point that you can get to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay? If they are too high, you might get a little bit stuck, or in order to get to vertical, your heels might come flying straight off the, the heel plates. If you're set too low, then you might go scooting straight past, which can cause power leaks and maybe hyperextension issues of your lower back all right so four minute warm-up we're going to do this at 18 strokes a minute and the power to start with is just enough that you can think about a push from your feet connecting to your hands and i'll explain as we start in three two one let's go now i do apologize because if you've been doing all of these rows so far you'll have heard me go through this over and over again but just in case this is your first row with me then the power from your stroke the majority of it comes from your feet pushing into the foot plates okay so you push with your feet that gets loads of power in however you do need to connect that power from your feet to your hands to the handle to get it into the machine and you do that by making sure that you pick up the handle and that means the handle connects to the flywheel or water wheel, whatever you're using, at the same time that you push with your legs. Okay, so you want to try and get it instant that you push, pick up at the same time. And you also have a good posture up on your sit bones, leaning into a one o'clock tilt over your hips and straight arms and that gets the power in there and hopefully as you're working on that timing and position you're able to increase your pace up to around about 2k plus 20 and if you don't know what i mean by 2k then it just means rowing a two kilometer time trial and dividing the resulting time by four to give you your average pace to cover 500 meters and that's your 2k training pace so when i say 2k plus 20 you take your training pace and add 20 seconds okay put one foot on the ground continue rowing make sure and still put in a good push from the leg that is still strapped in your pace will have gone down a bit because you've only got one leg in but think about that technique the connection timing between your foot and your hands your forward lean straight arms push swap feet so if you've only ever really thought about rowing as pulling on the handle to make it go it's time to try and reframe 
how you think about rowing that your power comes from that push from the legs push and then only at the back of the stroke do you pull with your arms one more here both legs in nice and straight row with your back and arms so right after I say all the power comes from a push I tell you to not use your legs at all yeah <laughs> but you you push with your legs and then you add in your back and then you add in your arms this is why we're practicing practicing this bit separately and then next up we'll do the opposite so roll to the front with straight arms and a forward lean and just push out with your legs hold that forward lean and straight arms and then just push your legs into the machine this is really important getting used to being able to push out from the front with your arms straight and this forward tilt okay I've got two more here I actually made a video <coughs> right we're done for someone else just showing why it's important to hold that position and then add in the back and the arms I might post that up as a separate just a kind of a random <coughs> video anyway talk about that later keep on moving up and down the rail have a quick drink I'll quickly describe one more time what we're doing today and then we'll get into our main session Okay, so today's row is very simple. We're rowing for 30 minutes at 18 strokes per minute. Most of it you're doing at 2K plus 20 pace, but every three minutes you're gonna take five power strokes. This is why today it's 10 power fives for the 10th row of the 12 days of Christmas, okay? So it's just about putting in more of a push from your legs for five strokes and then you return back to the normal 2k plus 20 pace until the end of that three minute chunk all right so it's very simple should be over and done with nice and quick these by breaking it into three minute chunks you should find that this 30 minute row is just going to go boop and absolutely fly by it's only a th half an hour so if it has taken out of you yesterday in terms of power and things to get uh, the ninth row of Christmas done, then today's not going to be too much of a toll on your body and this will set you up nicely for day 11, which trust me is going to be another top tier workout. So you, you want to make sure to, that today you keep your pace at 2k plus 20 for the majority of the row and it's only during the power strokes that you push it, okay? Right, let's get into this. Let's talk in more rowing. In three, two, one and we're off so 18 strokes a minute is one stroke every 3.3333333 seconds it's a bit confusing so on the video row along with me match my stroke rate and if possible match my drive speed and my recovery speed on the podcast I'm afraid you just have to listen out for the whoosh of my flywheel to know when I'm taking a stroke but for the folks on the video you are able to see the speed that I drive out at and then the speed that I recover at and it should be relatively clear that the drive phase is faster than the recovery phase and it should be round about 2 to 1 ratio where the drive is twice as fast as the recovery and that's what helps hopefully now that we're on the 10th day you've done enough of the low rate stuff that you started to get the flow for the low rate rowing but if you still haven't quite clicked with it yet then the key is the good powerful drive and then a slow recovery you're not just racing up and down the rail 
with an equal drive phase and recovery you should be exploding out get the power into the machine and then use the recovery to slow down make sure you're in the right body positions ready for the next stroke okay so in six strokes time we'll take our first power strokes now remember push with the legs hold a forward lean and arms straight two one all right here we go then i'll count you down five four three two one now if you were putting in a good old big shove from your legs what would probably have happened is you'll have found your drive speed was even quicker in fact I don't know whether okay but oh no so I mess around with, my, with the erg zone app as I roll with you now no let's drag <sighs> come on I do love erg zone but it's quite difficult to adjust <laughs> while, while rowing I'll give up uh, what I was trying to get at there was trying to see if it would show me my drive speed which it probably does but I'll get that set for another row I'm not going to mess around with my phone during the row I should have thought about that before I started but the speed because I'm putting in more power in these power strokes the drive speed becomes faster so the recovery for the power strokes will need to be a tiny bit slower in order to still only take 3.3333 seconds per stroke and it's the same with all stroke rates where drive speed and your recovery you use them in tandem to set your stroke rate I mean once you get up to 28 and above it ends to be tends to be more of a one to one ratio but certainly at these low stroke rates two to one is preferable okay three two one here we go with the power strokes five really push with the legs three two one okay and this connection that I was talking about during the warm-up is vital for getting the power in here this is the kind of row where if you have a power leak because of poor timing, poor connection you're really not going to see the pace effects that you might be hoping for I mean I'm rowing the main the main meat of this row at 2k plus 20 but then the power strokes 
I'm taken down to 2k plus 10 and that is hopefully a combination of really thinking about pushing as much force from my legs as I can but also getting the connection right not only timing so that I make sure as I push with the legs my hands have connected the handle to the machine but also body position that I'm really trying to be careful about holding the forward lean that tilt over the hips in a powerful posture and just as importantly I'm not grabbing with my arms it can feel quite inviting to bend your arms and fight the weight of the flywheel thinking that's going to make you go faster but it's not right, hang on we have four three two one here we go five to so try and hold that forward lean three two and straight arms one and the reason you want to keep your arms straight is to just let the power from your legs flow into the machine it's a straight kinetic line well that's not very straight is it <laughs> but it should just go straight into the machine without your back getting in the way without your arms fighting against that power and that's the problem is that when you pull early so if you come forwards and you grab then you're fighting and kind of diffusing the power that should be coming from your legs so you're not able to get the full potential power direct from your legs into the machine but the other thing is that when you do eventually want to pull in to a finish if you grab early you've only got a tiny half a pull into your chest so not only have you lost leg power at the front you've lost arm power at the back and this is what the video I was making for someone I went through the individual elements the leg drive the backswing and the arm pull at the straight same stroke rates to show how much power you get from each phase and then how much you get when you combine them right, hang on here we go in three two one you ready power strokes five so hold the forward lean four really push with the legs three straight arms two 
and keep those arms straight. One. So I was doing legs only, which gave me two minutes 30 pace at 24 strokes per minute, I think, or 26, can't remember. Then I did back only, so no legs, no arms, at the same stroke rate. That also gave me two minutes 30 pace. Then I did legs and back, and at the same stroke rate, I was then rowing at two minutes pace. Bang on two minutes for a 500. So I was getting an extra 30 seconds pace by adding my back into the leg drive rather than wasting it by swinging too soon. And what I mean is that if you come into the front and then as you drive, you lean back too soon. You've totally wasted the potential power that you get from your back swinging from a forward to a backwards lean. So if you are spending hours on a machine training as hard as you can, trying to get faster, trying to get that sub seven, 2K or the sub eight or whatever. And you take a video of yourself and you see that as you come forwards, you swing back way too soon. Whoa. Then, you don't need to put in any more training in terms of fitness and strength. You need to put in training to fix your technique. Okay, this one came around quick. Three, two, one. Here we go then, power strokes. Five, so four, arms straight, three, Two, one, and back down to normal pace. I'm hoping, I think it's the first time I've said back down to normal pace, but I'm kind of hoping you understand that, that after the power strokes, we just return. So, that's a simple explanation of why you hold that forward lean and then you drive with the legs and only when you're about halfway through the leg drive do you finally swing over your back. And it's the same the arm pull should be self-explanatory that pulling with the arms generates power and so if you can delay that arm pull until the back of the stroke until after you start that backswing then your arms aren't fighting the power coming from elsewhere. They're adding in the power. And that's what you want. As your legs begin to fade, your back adds power. And then as your legs really come to an end, your arm pull 
is the final top up of power and if you're talking force curves it's this kind of topping up of power that keeps your force curve high and rounded rather than just going straight up and down so if your monitor has a force curve you're looking for high and round not straight up and down v-shape okay three two one power strokes coming up push with the legs really think about pushing the machine away push it through the wall through the door wherever last one okay ease it off again hopefully even though we're doing these power strokes your heart rate won't be running away with you or running away from you I mean, mine's up at 139 right now which is around about or well, just under 75% of my rowing max heart rate but it's falling so that was it up at 139 after the power strokes so we'll see where it gets to before the next ones and I also have to play the I'm constantly speaking to you card so my cardio system is somewhat Uh, impacted upon by the fact that I'm constantly wittering away to you so I do tend to give at least 5 BPM for the fact that I talk and plus I don't really train with heart rate zones it's more about effort for me based on my 2k pace so this 2k plus 20 pace is a good low intensity maintenance row that I could do for hours I'm not going to say it would be the most exciting row in the world it would not be but I could do it okay four strokes to go my heart's down at 134 so it came down a bit last one and then let's hit those power strokes so really connect push get the timing right push of your feet pushing and your hands picking up the handle all done back to 2k plus 20 and yeah my heart rate through those power strokes rose to back up to 142 but it then steadily reduces again over the course of the next two minutes and 43 seconds before the next power strokes and we've only got as far as this series is concerned we've only got two more rows to do and like I say day 11 is back to a top tier workout 
and then day 12 which if you started these the same day I started putting them up day 12 should be Christmas Eve but don't worry if you've not done them with me maybe you're just picking and choosing maybe you're doing them completely out of order spreading them through the two week Christmas break who knows maybe it's August and you're just trying to relive Christmas 2021 uh, uh, but yeah current plan is the Christmas day I will jump on and do a live like half hour row or something do it on zoom as well as YouTube and then boxing day I'll do a half marathon on YouTube and Zoom. All right. Closing in on the next set of power strokes. Six more here. And then back up. Hopefully you're still pushing and seeing an increase in power. My heart's done at 136. So it dropped 6 BPM. Last one here. Here we go. Push. That's five. Four. Three. Two. One. Whew. Now, I know it's a bit late to be talking about it. But remember, your arms away really is the trigger here for your recovery so for a start you make sure that you when you pull in the handle you instantly release the handle again so the same pace in same pace out and you're not holding Okay, I see so many people who get to the back and they pause. And I really do think that this is a, the fault of the pick drill. The pick drill is where you go through various phases of the stroke and you stop to analyze what your posture and technique is. But I think some people have started to think that that's actually the point. That when you row, you go pause, hands, rock, in. Pause, hands, rock, in. And that is so not the point. If you think of that as a jaggy soul wave the rowing stroke is actually a fluid sine wave as you flow from phase to phase you're never stopped you're always moving even that transition at the front as you go between rolling forwards and driving out that should be a tiny 20th of a second if that amount of time to turn it around you're always moving yeah, okay four three two one here we go over the last power strokes push work on that connection four straight arms three forward tilt two and of course a strong finish one 
There we go. So we just get to paddle home for the rest of this row. Now, the reason that I say it's important that everything flows is that it's not just about getting even power into the machine. It's also to do with your recovery. And so your arms away, which I spoke about a couple of minutes ago, they set off the chain reaction of forwards momentum. So your arms go and they trigger the forwards lean, that tilt rock over your hips. Remember, it's a rock over your hips, not a rounding, bending move. But arms trigger your back and then you've got all of this weight on the front of the seat moving forwards. So by the time your hands are past your knees, you are in the perfect position for the next stroke. You're already shifting forwards. So all you have to do is bend your knees and with hardly any energy expenditure, you roll to the front of the machine. And there's a tiny element here that if you have a tight enough bungee cord, the short cord that keeps the, the chain tight, there's a tiny pull towards the front of the machine as the chain returns anyway. So use that. Let that chain pull be what continues your arms going out straight. And then that forward rock and then your knee bend. Two, last one, one. Ah, good job. How did I get on? Uh, pretty much what, yeah, average was 204.4, which when you bear in mind the power strokes, it's probably run about right. So really easy, simple session, made really quick, I hope, because you threw in the power strokes every three minutes. It should, should not really have totally blown out your cardio system. You might feel that because of those five power strokes, you were working a little bit harder than if that was just a straight um, 30 minutes, 18 strokes a minute at 2K plus 20, obviously because you're putting in the power strokes. But it should just have been like a nice little zing. It builds on the work we were doing in uh, day nine, which was about power. And it also means that it gives you a chance to kind of work those muscles through after quite a hard power workout the day before, rather than just kind of, so it means you kind of, you work with how you're developing your body rather than ignoring it and moving, moving away. You kind of, you, you slide into the next one rather than just going, that was a power one, this is an easy one, okay? Don't know where I was going with that, but hey. I was talking, so I thought I'd better finish off my analogy. Okay, I'm loading in a two minute cooldown, which is saved as a favorite on the row along track on ErgZone. A little advert for the old ErgZone people there. It really is worth getting as an app. If you have a PM5 monitor and you have an Android or, or iOS phone, then ErgZone or Crew are my preferred ones. I mean, listen, Erg Data is fantastic, but it's just not as fantastic as the two I've just mentioned. So anyway, right, two minute cooldown, 18 strokes a minute, 2K plus 20 to start, and then it will start slowing down quite quickly. In three, two, one, let's go. So you just want to take like six strokes at this pace, so this pressure, just so that your body kind of winds down from how hard it was just working. And from now you can start to ease off 
but all I want you to do is ease off the power you're putting in from your leg drive okay which again if you remember what we were saying right at the beginning a softer leg drive will mean a slightly slower drive speed but not so slow that you go back into a one-to-one -one ratio but that would hopefully give you a chance to think about legs back arms because you're not beasting the power in and fighting kind of working against the weight of the machine so you can just think legs back arms hold that forward tilt hold that forward tilt okay and then delay your arm pull too you're going nice and slow so you should be able to work with this at a slower pace less of an effort and it's the same with the return just think arms back legs arms back legs but all is a fluid motion okay so it's not legs back arms arms back legs legs back arms arms back leg i am a robot everything just flows man hey take it easy right last one for me you don't have to stop cooling down you can continue what i was just talking about going slow-mo and think leg back legs back arms arms back legs or right about now an image of me doing some stretching will have popped up in the corner of the screen, the screen so you can climb off your machine and follow along with that and stretch kind of the major muscles that I feel need stretch there's other things that you might want to stretch you might want to get some ankle flexibility you might want to do your calves depending on what's going on you might want to do some supine twists for your lower back there's a whole bunch of extra things you can obviously there's so many muscles you can stretch so many yoga things you can do but in the top corner you'll see me going through hamstrings and then glutes hip flexors quads shoulders or um, triceps biceps fingers and forearms and then kind of the upper and lower back no upper chest and upper back that's what i mean um and the one that i'll i'll just i kind of i've started to explain a bit more is when you do get to the biceps one which is about putting your hands behind you like you're kind of flying Woo! um you yeah, it is like you're flying and you want to rotate so spin and rotate your thumbs out. Ow, I just bit my lip. Um, so that's why I can't multitask. And that spinning will lengthen your kind of the major long bicep and that'll give it that the chance to, to stretch. You can do it kind of holding onto a doorway and stuff as well, which kind of, and then bending slightly and whatever, but just as a standing stretch, then just behind you um, with that rotation is important. All right, so sorry. Um, I've started to kind of, now that I've put this stretching thing up in the back, in the top corner, I feel I should just give it a little bit of uh, explanation. I'm going to actually do all of that as a standalone video um, with voiceover man. Hi there, it's me, and I've come to stretch for you all um, and talk you through exactly what it is because things like the glute stretch that you have to, you think, all right, where's that supposed to be feeling or the hip flexor one and, and whatever. So um, I'll either do a voiceover on that or I'll record a completely standalone video. But it's all I'm trying to, once I get through these 12 rows of Christmas and I'll have a little bit more time to do them that's when I'll do it but I wanted to make sure that he's up there doing his stretching for the time being anyway because I keep on promising that I'm going to put them on here so right that was day 10 done yeah 10 power fives so I hope you enjoyed it I hope it was a little bit of just fun within a 18 strokes a minute 30 which frankly isn't the most exciting row in the world but doing what we did today makes it a bit more exciting yay um Day 11 is going to be a top, uh, or row 11, sorry, is going to be a top tier of my pyramid. Remember, this is how I talk about stuff. You get the top tier, and you get the middle of the tier, mid-tier, and then you get the low-intensity stuff at the, at the bottom. So just because it's in the middle for the mid-tier stuff doesn't mean that it's like mid-effort that you're like, yeah, whatever. That mid-intensity is that kind of pushing and holding on to it. But we don't need to worry about talking about the mid one. We don't need to go anywhere near them again for this 12 rows of Christmas. We're done with the mids. We've only got a top and a bottom left. And I do understand that bottom intensity does sound a little bit childish and rude, but I'm not going to change it <laughs> because I've, I've had it up there for so long that changing and not talking about having a little bit of bottom intensity <laughs> um, it adds a little bit of mirth. Hey, why not? Um, but yeah, so 
there we go. That's it. I've got things to do. Uh, so I'm going to go stop keeping, stop keeping me busy. I've got things to do. Well, I don't actually. I've got some Christmas presents to wrap and that's run about it. And actually, what's the time? Yeah, uh, it's the last day of school for the kids. So um, I should really, in 27 minutes time, I should really be at the school gates to pick up my, <laughs> pick up my daughter. So um, yeah, youngest one finishes then. Eldest one, pfft, who knows where she is. Oh, kids, teenagers, eh? Oy. Anyway, um, so thank you so much for coming along and doing this one with me. I really appreciate you being part of the 12 Rows of Christmas, whether you're doing them along with me, whether you're doing them completely out of sequence, or like I said, whether it's the middle of August and you're like, yeah, I'm doing a Christmas row. I'm so completely against the world. Um, not that really rowing out of sync really is a... No one's going to say, wow, look at them. They're such a rebel. He's rowing out of sync. Um, yeah, so... There we go. I'm waffling. Hopefully he's had enough time to get through all of his stretches. Um, I kind of should be running about 30 seconds each, but depending on how long I flannel for at the end of this, um, it might be slightly less, hopefully not slightly more. I mean, crikey. Yesterday, I think it was six and a half minutes or something I spoke to, spoke for. And let's not do that again. So thank you so much. I will see you in row 11 of the 12 rows of Christmas. The last thing to say is the hashtag, which actually I've completely, what were we, what was the main focus of the day's chat? Hang on, I'm going to go blank. Uh, it's still about that connection. Let's just hashtag connection, okay? Because um, it's still about getting that connection, right? That forward tilt and making sure that you're completely connected as you push with your legs and get that power into the machine. You don't want to be starting the power here. You want to be starting the power here. Okay, right. Thanks very much. Look after yourselves. Stay safe. Be well. Bye-bye.